In the last several weeks, I've had this conversation with at least three or four men, and all of them were under the age of 30. And now that I look back at what was being spoken, I really wish that I had someone of my age now tell me how things were going to be later on in life when I was 30 or when I was even in my mid to late 20s. And that is that every man needs to walk his own path. Remember a couple of years ago, this whole MGTOW thing was like taking over YouTube, uh, along with several other controversial topics, that now most of those content creators have been banned off the platform. You can go ahead and take your pick as to which uh, topics I'm talking about, but that's neither here nor there. But there was also a, a strong movement amongst young adolescent males and even post-divorce uh, men who were almost taking like the black pill, the, the, the bitter black pill. This is like beyond red pill now, right? And so they sought refuge in this whole MGTOW thing. And I was never part of that. I, I, I never, I, I listened to a lot of that content, but I never really took, um, I never really embraced it because I thought it was flawed and it continues to be flawed. There's a very small sect now, very small sect within that, if it's still a thing on YouTube, I don't think it is, but that uh, almost degrade women. That's, uh, that's a whole nother subject. But the problem is, and, and this also goes into um, deviancy and uh, the consumption of, of content that is not for the underage, if you know what I'm saying. I, I used to have a problem with that. I used to be addicted to that, to adult content. And I can proudly say that uh, I'm going on, I believe, eight years without watching any of that stuff. And it caused a rift uh, between me and my late wife. And I saw the, the error of my ways already when it was too late, but um, I overcame that. Just like I overcame drugs and alcohol and I'm going on shit, I'm going on 23 years sober at the end of this year. And so the problem with men today is that they have no leadership. There is serious lack of leadership. And a lot of men, unfortunately, are being raised by single mothers. Now, the problem is that in that environment, you are not in the presence of a female-male dynamic. And so it carries on into their life, and then they pretend uh, that everything, they attack life from the female perspective. They have no male influence. And so now you see all these, um, I forget, so th this MMA fighter who is now the latest craze, he's the bee's knees because he is really now attracting young adolescent males and to live a, a YOLO type of life. I forget his name. He's like, and you know what's funny is that YouTube is actually promoting that. And and, and this goes back to the whole Edward Bernays. Uh, I'm going to butcher his quote. It, it, it was in the book, in his book, Propaganda, uh, which goes along something along the lines of like, um, you will live your whole life uh, making decisions uh, based on men that you have never seen or hear before. I, I, I'm butchering the quote. Uh, maybe I can add a screenshot there. But there is a war on for your mind. As cheesy as that may sound, and, and, and of course it, um, it, it's borrowing from, I'm just going to say AJ, okay? Uh, you can guess the rest. I, don't, I no longer listen to him because he's completely gone off the rails and you know, there are a lot of talk of that he is controlled opposition. So I'm not going to get into that realm. But there is a war on for your mind, especially the male mind. And, and that's how you degrade a society and overtake a nation by going after the women and the children. In this case, the children were young adolescent males being raised by mothers, you see. And the problem today is that men don't have a path and purpose. They just think that you have to go to school, you have to graduate, then you got to go to college, then you got to get a career, then you got to get the, you know, the six-figure income and contribute to society, pay taxes, get married, have kids, white uh, picket fence with the house and the dogs, and then retire at 65, and then your kids take care of you. That is such a fucking pipe dream, dude. It really is. 
Did you know that the 40-hour work week was designed and perfected by the Rockefellers? And this was like, they were debating this whole formula, late 1800s, early 1900s. Not to mention the fact that they took over the medical industry and then the education. So in a roundabout sort of way, they themselves, well, not they themselves personally, but they have mechanisms in place that print the textbooks for our colleges and our schools. And this is something that people don't want to hear. They don't want to, they, oh, I don't, I don't have time for that shit. Uh, I just want to live my life. I just want to go to work and, you know, Monday through, Monday, uh, through Friday, you know, nine to five and then Friday, Saturday, Sunday off or whatever your schedule is. I just want to, you know, drink a couple beers with the boys and watch the game on a Sunday. It's such a formulaic life, dude. And this is why, like, the Matrix has really gotten a grasp on the human psychology, not just the American uh, mentality, but the world. How many times do people reference that film? In almost every aspect of our lives. And that's the thing is that men don't have a path and purpose. When you find your path and purpose and your passion, and that's the thing, passion, men are walking around without passion. And I can't believe the amount of men that live their lives based on the opinions, not of others, but of women. They do everything for a woman. Most men don't know that a woman will never love you the way you want to be loved. That is not your problem. That is not your business. And the men I was having these conversations with all are in relationships that they do not need to be in. They think, okay, I'm with this girl because that's what I have to do. They have no intentions of marrying this woman. I remember my late wife's uh, mother, my mother-in-law, may she rest in peace as well. She told me, you know, when I was growing up, I'm talking about 20s and 30s. She lived a long, fruitful life at 97. 20s and 30s was telling me that it was so rare for a man to live in the same house, to cohabitate with a woman, if he had no intentions of marrying her. You have no business living with a woman. None whatsoever. None. It is not your business to seek out a relationship with a woman. Like, do you want to be my girlfriend? Those words should never utter your mouth. Never. You have to live your life as if you're alone. Not an introverted loner, but you're alone. You make your own decisions. You stand firm on the ground on this realm that you walk on. And that in and of itself attracts people to you. It's the law of attraction. That's what women are looking for. They want a leader. They want someone who is sure of himself, who knows where he walks on. That's what women want. But it's not your job to, to live your life based on that. And so that's what creates weak men. And there's a lot of men that don't want to hear this, man. Right now, they're probably listening to this and living in an apartment with a girl. They have no intentions of building something. If that's not your intention, what are you doing there? What are you doing with your life? Why are you carrying this woman along for a fucking pipe dream? Do you understand? You know how many women I've met where the man... Took him along for a ride for years, dude. Years. Only to come to find out that five, six, seven years down the road, nothing ever happened. Because he had no intention. He was just bunking with a chick. She was basically your roommate. And so you have ruined a woman's life because you yourself didn't know where you were going. That's fucking beta. That is low-hanging fruit. I'm not here defending women. I'm just talking to men who have no direction, no path and purpose, no passion. They're just living paycheck to paycheck. Shit, they're not even going to school, bro. I mean, if you wanted to do something with your life, they're just going along just to get along. And I see this everywhere. So this is not just a message for, oh, hey, women, do, you know, leave these guys that you're with if they're not doing this or that. No, it's not. This message is for men. This is who I'm talking to. It's the politics of logic. Use your logic, use your rationale, and really take the time to look into yourself and meditate. The reason why I'm talking to you guys like this is because I wish I had someone in my life when I was younger to talk to me this way. Unfortunately, that wasn't the case. But now we're here together. We're all trying to figure this out, man. I see it every day. 
I see it in the eyes. You know how you can tell more about a person looking at, looking at them through the side of their eyes than the front of their eyes? You can see sorrow. You can see resentment. You can see guilt. You can see, uh, not necessarily disgust, but you can see like, man, shit, I'm just trying to figure this out, man. I, I have no... I have no direction. I have nobody to, like, to lean on. And the fact of the matter is, is that a lot of men need help. Never talk to a woman about your problems. Talk to a friend. Talk to a male cousin, a male therapist, a male coach, a male teacher. Even if you have a father in your life, but you don't have that kind of relationship with him, seek the help of another man. And it's okay to bust a tear and cry, and, and you, you got to let it out, bro. You have to let it out. Because the last thing you want to do is show a woman weakness, if you're so worried about that. Or show others weakness. Oh, shit, he's not as strong or as tough as I thought he was. We all want to be a big bear, but in fact, we're like a little flower inside. And we got to man up. You got to own it. But you need direction, you need a path and purpose. What is it that you want to do? Have a career so when decades go by, you're going to have a midlife crisis and then you're going to say, shit, man, this is not what I wanted, to be honest with you. Look where my life is now. 100K a year for what? To buy new shit, to have a dope apartment in the big city, a nice flashy car. For what? That doesn't mean shit. I'm telling you, man, the older you get, the more you start to realize that none of this shit makes any sense. None of it makes sense. And we're all trying to figure it out. 